Shall we rise up as we sing together from our gospel hymns and songs number 205? Gospel hymns and songs number 205. Have you counted the cost? There's a line that is drawn by rejecting our Lord where the call of his spirit is lost. And you hurry along with the play of Maltron. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? You may batter your hope of eternity's morning for a moment of joy at the most, for the guilt of sin and the things it will win. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? While the door of his mercy is open to you, ere the depth of his love you exhaust, won't you come and be healed? Won't you whisper, I yield? I have counted, I have counted the cost. Have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, though you gain the whole world for your own, even now it may be that the line you have crossed. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost?
Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 8. John 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. 
They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, Ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house for ever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, Verily I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself, and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. May God help us to be doers of the word.
Everybody shout. God bless everyone. Who is the Lord blessing now? He'll bless you. Bless your soul. Bless your spirit. Bless your body. And bless the work of God in your hand. I am blessed. Somebody there, I am blessed. Your blessing will keep overflowing in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your people. We're asking, Lord, that this day will be a special day for everyone. Sorrows all gone. Suffering all gone. Oppression all gone. We well, welcome your blessings and your benefits and the breakthrough for every life, even at this time in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, speak to your children, speak to your servants. We're all hearing and your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can see that we're coming to Matthew chapter 24. The disciples asked a question or maybe a series of questions in Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 3. 
And as they search upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him. And they came to him privately. It's just between the Lord and his disciples, between Christ the Messiah and his followers, between the Savior and these believers and leaders, they asked him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. Now, Jesus Christ, in answering that question, started with what will be happening? What will happen in the temple, in Jerusalem, in Israel, in the world? The devastation, the destruction that will take place. Now he comes to the spiritual side. Look at verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Can you believe that? After they had spent three years with the Lord Jesus Christ, after they have listened to the greatest of teachers, the greatest of masters, after they have listened to a teacher that taught with authority and power, after they have listened to a teacher come from heaven, the one that spoke with great clarity, and yet telling them of the possibility of being deceived, and he told them, take heed that no man deceive you. Can you imagine anyone in our church who has been taught from cover to cover of the Bible? Can you imagine anyone in our church that has heard precept upon precept and line upon line? Can you imagine those who have been taught everything that is profitable for us in the word of God that the Lord is still saying, take it that no man deceive you. And then he tells us in verse 5, for many, not a few, for many, not just one, one person per town, per city, for many, many deceivers, many false prophets, many people that perpetrate evil, unsound, unscriptural, dark doctrine, for many shall come in my name. They will not say they are coming in the name of Satan. They will not say they are coming in the name of Voodoo, in the name of Gigi, in the name of Idol. They will not say they are coming in the name of falsehood. They will not say they are coming in the name of the Antichrist. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. They will not even say, I am Moses. They will not say, I am Elijah. They will not say, I am a prophet. They will not say, I am a priest. They will say, I am the Christ. I shall deceive many. Can you imagine anybody coming and saying I am Christ and still deceiving one solitary person and still deceiving even a few people but many shall be deceived and shall deceive many. That's why the Lord is telling us today and that is why he's warning us that if we have ears to hear, we ought to hear. If we have eyes to see, we ought to open our eyes and see. And it's warning us. We're looking at the message Christ's warning against strong delusion. Christ's warning against strong delusion. I'm looking at the word in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Here we're reading from verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. The apostle is making an appeal, an appeal to the church, an appeal to the believers on the ground of the certainty of the coming of the Lord. And he says, we're pleading with you. 
we're begging of you and we're warning you as well because of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and because of our gathering together unto him gathering together unto him in the rapture and then the rest tribulation says gathering together unto him at the second coming it says we beseech you we're preaching to you we're warning you we're begging of you and we are admonishing you because of the coming of the lord that ye be not so shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit or by word or by letter as from us as that the day of christ is at hand is saying don't be troubled don't be worried don't be anxious don't be fretful don't be alarmed in your heart as to the day of the lord he's talking about a final day of judgment he's talking about that day of perdition he's talking about that day of furious fiery punishment upon the ungodly the rapture will take place before that second coming and before that final day and he's saying are you a believer are you saved are you sanctified are you holy is your heart purged prepared for the lord have you settled everything in your life that could be a hindrance between you and christ when he comes have you taken away all those things that will not make you see his face don't be alarmed and don't be troubled are you righteous in your heart have you been made pure and clean by the blood of the lamb have you made right your way have you done your restitution have you cleared the way between you and god between you and your savior between you and the spirit of god are you taking his word seriously in your heart are you living a life that god will say well done when he comes then he says don't be troubled have you made it through between you and your wife now that you are preaching and then there's animosity in the heart between you and your wife between you and your husband and between you and your neighbors have you apologized what well, you need to apologize have you said sorry what well, you need to say sorry have you amended your way then don't be alarmed the lord is coming and the coming of the lord will not be a message of fright and fear in your heart because you are getting yourself ready look at verse 3 let no man deceive you by any means because that day shall not come except there come a falling away first a falling away first christendom will fall away churches will fall away religious assemblies will fall away they will fall away into the hands of false prophets they will fall away into the hands of deceivers because they will not take warning that jesus said take it that no man deceive you and then it says that man of perdition man of sin shall be revealed and it says is a son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god or anyone that is worshipped so that he as god seated in the temple of god showing himself that he is god it says in the last days beware be careful there are people that will want to replace god and they sit there or they stand there and they act as god and they demand ultimate worship and they demand ultimate obedience and they demand ultimate surrender unto them rather than unto god it says such people will be there verse 5 remember ye not 
that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth the Holy Ghost for the church will let, will hinder, will prevent, will restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Wicked there with capital W, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. It says, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan, the Antichrist, the beast, the deceiver, the false prophet will have abundance, avalanche, of the power of Satan walking with them with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this reason, for this purpose, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. I pray you'll not believe a lie. There are people that preach lies concerning repentance and they say it's not necessary anymore. All you need to do, just believe. Lies of the devil, you'll not believe a lie. The people that preach lies concerning restitution and they say, Oh, you worried about restitution? God has forgiven and forgotten everything. A lie from the pit of hell, you'll not believe a lie. The people that, that preach lies concerning sanctification, holiness, they say it is impossible for anyone to be holy. And yet the word of God says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And there are those who choose to believe a lie concerning holiness. You will not believe a lie. I can't hear your amen. In verse 11, for this cause God shall send them some delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness the lord has given us warning and if we're going to escape the calamities coming at the end of this world coming just before the second coming of the Lord, we must heed his warning. It tells us in Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. I'm reading from verses 5 and 6. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. If you are not watchful, you'll be deceived. If you are running after the ephemeral things and the superficial things of the world, you'll be deceived. If the desire in your heart that will not hold on to something spiritual, something special, something peculiar, something that is scriptural, you'll be deceived. But it says, take heed lest any man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many take it watch beware so that you're not deceived christ's warning 
against strong delusion. Three things we're looking at as we consider Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. Number one, serious warning against strong delusion. Serious warning against strong delusion. Point number two, saints' watchfulness against strange doctrine. Saints' watchfulness against strange doctrine. Number three, supernatural wonders through steadfast dedication. Look at number one, serious warning against strong delusion. We're back to Matthew chapter 24. I will read him from verses 4 and 5. It says in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Unto them who? Unto them disciples that asked the question. Unto them disciples who are interested in the coming of the Lord. Unto them disciples who want to be ready at the coming of the Lord. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you don't look at their priestly garment they might deceive you don't look at their high titles they might deceive you don't look at their promotion in the media because the media exaggerates their position don't think about that and say whatever they say whatever they preach whatever they profess I accept, no, take it, that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. On the internet, many shall come in my name. On the YouTube, many shall come in my name. In the papers, many shall come in my name. Well, these a great kind of assemblies they put together. Many shall come in my name, saying... I am Christ. If they don't say it by word of mouth, they say it by action. They say it by comportment. They say it by turning away your mind and your eyes from Christ and making it to center your affection on them, your face on them, and your pin, your destiny on them. And even when they are calling you, when other people are calling you to hear sound doctrine, you are so much enticed and you are so much glued to these personalities who replace Christ in your life. They will say, I am Christ, and they shall deceive many. Warning, serious warning against stronger delusion. We're reading from Jeremiah chapter 27. Jeremiah chapter 27. We're reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 10. For they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land. And that I should drive you out, and ye should perish, tells us the outcome and the result, the effect of those false prophets, of those deceivers who prophesy lies to the nation. They preach lies to the nation. The real word of Christ repent ye and believe the gospel they've forgotten that in their messages for a long time and the real word of christ when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that somebody has your brother has somewhat against you leave your gifts there at the altar and go make your restitution 
be reconciled unto your brother after that come with a clean heart with a free heart with a purposeful heart and with a purified heart with no offense in your conscience come back and offer your gifts all they tell you now god is love your mother god is love your disobedient god is love you are sinful, God is love. You are transgressing, God is love. You blaspheme the Holy Ghost, God is love. They do not tell the truth. Why? Look at that verse 10. For they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land, from the kingdom, from your experience. And from the church that tells you the truth, they want to remove you far from the church, the church, a foundation of truth. And it says, and that I should drive you out. When the Lord sees that you are listening to false prophets, and you are listening to false doctrine, and you are listening to deception, and you are acting out the deception. It says that's the purpose of the deceiver. That I will drive you out. And ye should perish. Ezekiel chapter 21. In Ezekiel chapter 21. Remember the strong warning. And the serious warning. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beware. Take heed because of these deceivers that will come. Ezekiel 21, reading from verse 29. Ezekiel 21, reading from verse 29. It says in verse 29, When they see vanity unto thee, when they, when they proclaim vanity unto you, when they preach vanity unto you, when they prophesy vanity unto you, what's vanity? Something that is vain, something of no value, something that has no wit, something that has no truth, the truth that saves. There are people in their deception. They'll preach. You cannot even fault them. Because what they say is true. Only they will not say the whole truth that saves. They've taken away the seriousness of the word. They've taken away the depth of the revelation. All that remains is superficial and vain. But it says, whilst deceive vanity unto thee, whilst the divine a lie unto thee, the divine, they reveal, they promote, they profess, they proclaim a lie unto you to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain. What does that mean? Some are slain already. Destroyed already. And those who are still alive, they preach lies unto them that they too will fall on the necks of those already slain of the wicked whose day is come when the iniquity shall have an end. The iniquity judged by the Lord because they believe a lie. Colossians chapter 2, reading from verse 8. Colossians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 8. It says in verse 8, Beware, beware. You see, there are Christians, so-called, 
who do not understand the word, beware. They are not aware of any danger. They are not wary of any danger. They go anywhere. They come to deeper life. They go to another place. Immediately after hearing something serious, they go to water it down. By other things, they go to hear. And they put everything together. And the amalgamation, the coming together of the truth and the lie, of the serious message and superficial message, makes them not to be careful in their lives. They are carefree. They do not take anything to heart. But the word of God from the gospels unto the epistles still emphasize, emphasizes, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. In verse 18 it says, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. No man. Let no man beguile you. In the church, don't look at people. Don't look at ministers. Don't look at the people that like to water down the word of God. Don't look at people that like to make us sway away from the word of God. That's the exact warning the Lord Jesus Christ is giving us. Let no man beguile you of, of uh, your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly popped up by his fleshly mind vainly popped up by his fleshly mind it tells us in first timothy first timothy i'm reading from chapter four and i read from verse one it says now at this time now close to the end of the age now Close to the time as Christ is coming. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, when this time, in the latter times, when when is near the coming of the Lord, in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. And those who depart like that, they make up their minds. They say the lies they are holding on to now, they say that's the real thing. And since they started holding on to those lies, they have got more money. Since they started holding on to those lies, many people have been coming to their churches. Well, sinners come into the churches because you tell them what they want to hear. You don't tell them about repentance, about redemption, about righteousness, about restitution. Because you are quiet and silent on the truth. That's why they are coming. And because of that, they hold on to error. It says, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared. With a hot iron. That's what will be happening at the close of time. That's what will be happening at the time when Christ is coming again. Error will not sweep you away. Deception will not sweep you away. If there is anything that gets us ready for the coming of the Lord, it is the word he has given us from the beginning. And when you hold on to that word, when you believe that word, and when you abide in that word, when you practice that word, when you conscientiously, earnestly strive 
and contend for that word. When you live for that word in the minutest detail, that's when you are getting ready for the coming of the Lord. Point number two. Point number two, saints' watchfulness against strange doctrine. Saints' watchfulness against strange doctrine. Now, when we talk of something strange, when you see it for the first time, when you are totally in the truth, when you are totally in the light, it's strange. But you see, isn't it interesting what these people are preaching, what they are saying? Then you listen again, and it's not so strange anymore. And then you listen to them again, and you begin to appreciate their standing, their posture, their demeanor, their characteristics. You begin to appreciate even the addiction and the things they say. You begin to appreciate the way they tone down, the way they water down, and the way they present what they present. And what was strange at the beginning as a doctrine, what was strange to you is no more strange anymore because you now see what them, just like all the people they deceived before you got to their side were also deceived. Let's look at chapter 13 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verses 8 and 9. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. What does that mean? If Jesus came back here today, he'll emphasize repentance. If Jesus came back here today, because the same yesterday, today, and forever, he will emphasize humility. And he will say, those who humble themselves will be exalted. And those who exalt themselves in pride will be abased. Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. What does that mean? If he came here today, he will be saying the same thing. He will say, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. He will be saying the same thing today, blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God, Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday and today and forever. Verse 9, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. That's the word of God, be not carried about. I love this, I love that, I love that preacher. I love the church building. I love their dressing. I love their, you know, not totally worldly, but their, you know, worldliness to attract the world and, and see what they're doing. I like the way they overlook the scripture, the scripture, and make women to do what the New Testament says they shouldn't be doing. But I like that. I like their, you know, way of ameliorating and, you know, toning down things. Strange doctrine. Be not carried about by with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Strange doctrine. You get rid of them. I said we get rid of them. You know, there are people that talk about love, love to the point 
they will even condemn Christ. And they misunderstand the word of God and they make the word of God like to come upside down. And because of that, they have no backbone anymore. They have no strength anymore. They have no stamina to stand for the truth. You'll sometimes hear them. You know what? I don't want to preach to other people and lose my soul. How can you do that? I don't want to emphasize sound doctrine and earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints and lose my soul. I don't want to train my children. I don't want to keep my children in the truth. And I don't want to scripturally make my children to abide in the truth. And then I lose my soul. And I say, tell me what do you mean? Tell me the real thing you are talking about. You don't want to lose your soul. He said, Pastor, you know now. I said, I don't know. Tell me. He says, I remember Moses. What is it about Moses? That he struck the rock twice because the people provoked him. And so, in trying to defend the truth, he lost getting to the land of Canaan. No, you didn't understand that passage. Look at Moses on other areas. Other areas like Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And he said, come. And he said, they wouldn't come. And he told the people, he said, people, see, if these people die a natural death, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the earth opens and swallows up rebellion, then you know the Lord has sent me. And it happened like that. Korah, this and Abiram, they were swallowed by the earth alive. And fire came and consumed the 250 that followed them. The Lord did not say you'll not get to the land because of that. That wasn't anything personal. It was defending the truth. Phineas, when the Lord had something against the children of Israel, and this man took a Midianitish woman and demonstrated immorality openly, Phineas took a javelin and struck them down, cut them down. The Lord did not say, Phineas, because of what you've done, the way you've done it, you will not get to the land of promise. He said, Phineas has released me of my anger and wrath against the children of Israel. I make with him a covenant of peace. Joshua discovered that Achan had taken the goodly Babylonish garment. And Joshua said, tell me the truth. And he told him. And then Joshua said, why have you troubled Israel? The Lord will trouble you. And they stoned him to death. God did not say, Joshua, how did you act like that? You are not going to stay in the land of Canaan, Nehemiah. He said, I came back and I saw that Sambalat and Tobiah are taking prominent place in the house of God. They even rented a place for Tobias in the temple. And now they have married uh, these Gentiles that their children could not speak in the pure language of the Jews. And he said, I chased them from me. He said, all those leaders, I pulled out their, their air and I told them this will not happen. God didn't say, Nehemiah. Uh -uh, look at what you've done. You will not get to the kingdom. The Lord Jesus Christ came to the temple. And he saw those who were buying and those who were selling. And he took a whip. Our master, our Lord, our savior, our sanctifier. 
the Holy One. He took a whip and he drove all of them out and all their tables. He put upside down. And God did not say, my son, how did you act like that? Now I reject you because of what you've done. Do not at all. When you stand for the righteousness of God, you stand for the purity of the scripture, and you stand for the holiness of life so that the people of God will get to heaven, you're not disqualified from heaven because of that. Come back to Moses. What actually happened? The rock that followed them is Christ. That rock was a picture of Christ. And because he struck the rock once before, and water came out, and the Lord said, that represents Calvary. You understand? Many of the things in the wilderness represented Calvary. The serpent on the pole represented Calvary. And the tree that was taken to throw into the water that was bitter and it became sweet represented Calvary. And the blood that have given for the atonement of every soul, Leviticus, that represented Calvary. The rock represented Christ. And the rock had been smitten once. And after that once, now, don't crucify him again. Don't strike him again. What are you to do now? You are to speak to the rock. And instead of speaking to the rock, after the rock had been smitten once, he struck the rock. One, one, two times. And the Lord said, you spoil the emblem, the symbol, the illustration that precedes the coming of Christ. That's why he told him, not because he wanted people to stand straight or stand firm, not because you want to train your children, not because you want people to follow after righteousness. You cannot go to hell for telling people to follow after righteousness or because of striking the rock two times. Hebrews, I'm looking at chapter 6. Hebrews, chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 6 if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing the crucify to themselves the son of God afresh Christ have been crucified and to strike him the second time is to crucify the Son of God afresh and to put him to open shame. The Lord is telling us that we need to watch the saints watchfulness against strange doctrine. We shouldn't allow strange doctrine to come and say, I cannot contend against that. I cannot fight against that. I cannot preach against that. I cannot be firm. I cannot be fairy. I cannot be faithful. I cannot be fixed in my understanding because I don't want to preach to other people. I don't want to help other people. I don't want to train other people and go to hell. You'll not go to hell on telling the truth. I said you'll not go to hell on telling the truth. You want the best for the Lord? You can't go to hell for that. You're preaching righteousness and proclaiming righteousness. You can't go to hell for that. You're earnestly contending for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints, you won't go to hell for that. I won't go to hell. I can't hear you. You'll not go to hell in Jesus' name. Mark, I'm reading from chapter 7. Mark, chapter 7. We're reading from verse 6, Mark chapter 7, verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honoreth me with their leaves, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me? 
teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. That's strange doctrine, strange doctrine. Teaching for doctrine, the commandments of men. We're looking at we're looking at Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. And I'm reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. That we be not people who are unstable. They believe this now. The following week, they believe another thing. They were strong. They were strengthened. They were firm. They were fixed in their conviction. Years gone by. But since they began listening to this on the internet, and reading that other book, and reading that other scene, and listening to that other scene, it has watered down their faith and their conviction. It has watered down their consecration. It has watered down their seriousness in the word of God. They're like children who are tossed to and fro. And they're carried about with every wind of doctrine or the, by the slate of men. And calling craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. I pray that will not be your lot. That will not be my Lord. We will stand for the truth. Have you noticed how the false prophets and the false preachers have influenced many congregations? And what those other congregations stood on before, they cannot stand on those things anymore because some few people some few preachers who propagate this watered down gospel have infiltrated into those assemblies and i cannot stand anymore this church will stand through you through me through us together this church will stand and all false doctrine and false presentation that makes us to forget the truth, the righteous word, the saving word, the sanctifying word, all those things that come in will flush them out. And if there are people that will still remain in the false doctrine, false presentation, if we didn't know and we gave them chance to come and talk to our church we didn't know and so the first time they come and they spew out all those things that will bring confusion now that we know we'll take our pulpit away from them and we'll take them away from our pulpit amen First Timothy chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, if anyone comes and then he does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strives of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth totally void of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such tell me from such say it aloud from such 
withdraw thyself. You'll notice, see, well, I'm an adult. I know how to sift. I'll take what is good and I will reject what is bad. It's not like that. The message is like water coming through a pipe. If the pipe is corroded, if the pipe is dirty, if the pipe has poisonous elements inside and the water flows through that poison pipe, you cannot say, I'll take the water, I'll take what is bad, reject, I'll take what is good, accept. You drink the water, you injure your spiritual life. You drink that water and you injure yourself. I pray the Lord will have mercy and save us from all the destruction we bring upon ourselves in Jesus' name. Point number three now. Supernatural wonders through steadfast dedication steadfast dedication steadfast dedication dedication cannot be haphazard dedication cannot be superficial dedication cannot be with half of your mind half of your heart dedication cannot be wishy-washy dedication has to be total dedication has to be steadfast dedication has to be firm in the last days in which we're living just before the coming of christ there'll be a lot of smooth smooth speakers that will sway dedicated people away from the truth they will not sway you daniel chapter 11 daniel chapter 11 let me read verse 21 first daniel chapter 11 verse 21 and in his state shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries obtain the kingdoms by flatteries you know sometimes there are people that will be out there and they're wondering how can we have the heart of that congregation how can we have that assembly and bring them under? They don't start by telling you what they don't agree with. That your pastor preaches holiness, we don't agree. Your pastor is doing this, we don't agree. Your pastor is standing firm on the word of God, we don't agree. If they say that, they'll not win you, they'll not have you. But they say, which church do you go? You mentioned the church. Have you listened to pastor so-and-so? Oh, that's my pastor. I listen to him every time. He says, you know, I love that pastor. Flattery. I appreciate that pastor. Flattery. And if you know how many messages I have of that pastor, if I, I'm going to tell you, I listen to his messages more than you do. What? Yes, even though I'm not there physically. Flattery. You know what? They want to have the heart of the church. And they want to possess the church by the flattery. They will not flatter you to backsliding. They will not flatter you to submission. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it says, Now, when they shall fall, they shall be holding with a little help. 
but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Many will cleave to the deceivers with flattery. They'll flatter you and they'll say, you know, if I can have you, can't you miss just one service in your deeper life and then I can have you and come and tell my people this and that and they flatter. I remember some years ago, a fervent brother. I remember how fervent he was on evangelism, on holiness, on everything that we're preaching. And then I called him. I said, my brother, slow down. Come on here. I see that you are going to leave the church. I wasn't preaching. I was talking to him directly. And I said, when you leave, a church will say, come and preach to us. We want everything you've got. I said, but you know, that's flattering. They're trying to get you. But they will get all their people together and lecture them and tell them, we're calling this man and he's coming from deeper life. When he comes, act as if you understand, act as if you agree, act as if you want to take everything of the word of God. But please know everything we've been teaching you here. Don't obey anything he says. So I told him that. So I said, they will waste your life. And you will waste your life on them. And you will realize later what I'm telling you. And to come back after that might be a challenge to you. He smiled. I can see his face now. As I was talking to him, he said, Pastor, you know me what I stand for. And you know me, no one, not in this country, not anywhere, can blindfold me like that. I said, please, don't argue. I'm telling you, you will leave. I'm telling you, this is where you will go. I'm telling you, this is what my pastor would have done and said before you get there. He said, well, I know myself. I cannot doubt myself. For some time, I did not see him in the church. And then one day, he surfaced. He was sad. And he said, Pastor, I need to tell you. I need to see you. I said, sit down. He said, I've gone the way you said I will go. And I went to a particular place. And that pastor accepted me. And but that pastor told me, I hand over the church to you. Say what you want to say. Speak what you want to speak. Don't look at my face. When he told me that, I said, I have arrived. And then after preaching and preaching and preaching, one of the leaders in the church, elders in that church, called me privately and said, Brother so and so, why did you leave deep alive? Oh, he said, because I want to help you here. He said, please, go back to deep alive. You are wasting your time here. Before you came, our pastor called us that you were coming. And our pastor want us not to listen to what you are saying. All that you are preaching, that we say, amen, yes, we believe. All is just a show. They taught us to do that. But I want to tell you, we're still the way we are. And I'm pitying you that you are wasting your talent here. You are wasting your time here. Please, for the sake of your soul, go back to deeper life. That elder was not a member of deeper life. He was a member of their church. And it was there when the pastor warned them about this coming man. And so the brother came back to me and said, Pastor, although we don't see you as a prophet, but everything you said is true in my life. 
And if I come back now, what will I do? I said, my brother, look at this. Pastor so-and-so is now in charge of this. Pastor so-and-so is in charge of that. Pastor so-and-so is in charge of that. As so I've come back now, we cannot displace them. We cannot uh, brush them aside and say, because I know you, go and take their place. If you're going to do anything, if you had stayed, you would have been doing those things. But now, you will take your time. You will wait. You couldn't wait. Now that you have not gone back, can I appeal to you? Don't go back. You will not go back. The flat trees of the people there in the world will not capture you to waste your life and to waste your resources in Jesus' name. We're looking at chapter 11, verse 32. Verse 32, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people that do need know their god shall be strong and shall do exploits the people that do know their god are they here the people that do know their god do you still know the lord the people that do know their god you know the power of god you will be strong you have the word of god you will be strong and they will do exploits. You will do exploits in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 6. Reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God. That she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, you will stand. You will not fall. You will not fall to false prophet. You will not fall before deceivers. You will not fall before those who are bringing strange doctrine in Jesus' name. And then it says in verse 14, Stand therefore. Having your loins got about your truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, above all, above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able, able, able. Able, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always when you are tired, praying always when you are excited, praying always when it's in need, praying always. When the power is running down, praying always. When the oil is running down, praying always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching thereunto. With all perseverance and supplication of the saints. You will overcome. You will quench all the furry darts of the wicked one. And the warning the Lord has given us, the strength, the ability, the foresight, and the earnestness to keep to that, God will give you in Jesus' name. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come, saying, 
I am Christ and shall deceive many, but you will not be deceived. Who is that? You will not be deceived. You will overcome every deceiver. You will overcome everyone that brings any false doctrine. You will stand till he comes, until when he comes, you will stand. He's going to prepare heaven for you. You will be there. I will be there. I will be there. Rise up and tell the Lord, He wants you to be in heaven. He's going to prepare heaven for you. But take it, take it, take it, beware. Lest any man deceive you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.